Hello, this is a virtual pathology specimen of the abdominal aorta, and this is the distal part of the aorta with its bifurcation into the common iliac arteries. On the flip side, this is part of the inferior vena cava, again with the common iliac veins. The pathology here is seen within the common iliac veins as well as the iliac vessels and what we are looking at is the presence of a venous thrombus. We can see here this vein has been partially opened and there is this dark brown cast within the vein and this is a thrombus. Similarly, we can see that there is a thrombus that is filling up the lumen of this vein. Turning this back round, there is a window that is cut open in the vein and we can see the dark brown thrombus filling up the lumen of this vein. So this is an example of a venous thrombus and it is located within the deep veins, the iliac veins, and this is an example of deep vein thrombosis. In the aorta, we can actually see if we look carefully that there are these yellowish fatty plaques and therefore there is evidence of atherosclerosis in the aorta but the main pathology here is this dark brownish thrombus within the iliac veins. Let's have a look at another example of venous thrombosis. Here is another example and again we're looking at the abdominal aorta and here of course are the kidneys with the renal arteries branching out of the aorta. Right next to this is the inferior vena cava and if I magnify this area we can see within the inferior vena cava this is the inner surface of the inferior vena cava and here is a brownish thrombus within the lumen. Usually venous thrombi are darker red or darker brown compared to arterial thrombi because of the very high concentration of red blood cells within venous thrombi. These usually occur as a result of stasis or decreased venous return. Let's learn a little bit more about venous thrombosis. Venous thrombosis most frequently occurs in the veins of the leg and they can occur in superficial veins such as the saphenous vein, for example, in the context of varicose veins. And they can also occur in the deep veins as we see in this example in the iliac veins and they can involve the femoral iliac or popliteal veins. There are some very important predisposing states to venous thrombosis. They include hypercoagulability, bed rest or immobilization. This is often due to lack of muscle contraction or pumping in the muscles in the lower limbs, therefore reducing venous return and increasing stasis. Trauma, burns or surgery can also give rise to venous thrombosis, whether it is due to immobilization or injury to the vessels, and injured tissues also tend to release procoagulants. Pregnancy is also another risk factor because of decreased venous return and also hormone-induced hypercoagulability. And malignancy can also give rise to a state of relative hypercoagulability. Clinically, deep vein thrombosis may be asymptomatic. Sometimes there may be some degree of swelling. Sometimes there is pain as well, but often it is asymptomatic. One of the most important and potentially life-threatening complications is embolization, particularly pulmonary embolism, where this thrombus, this long thrombus, can actually fragment, throw off an embolus traveling in the bloodstream along the venous return and into the heart and eventually into the pulmonary arteries. And if this is a very large pulmonary embolus, it can give rise to sudden death. Otherwise, smaller emboli give rise to pulmonary infarction. Superficial deep vein thrombosis is more likely to give rise to clinical signs such as swelling, pain, and sometimes even ulceration of the skin. Back to the gross pathology specimen, and this virtual pathology specimen, together with the other one, 
is taken from our virtual pathology museum from our online pathology resource path web this is free and you can register using the link in the video description hence in summary we have here an example of a case of deep vein thrombosis involving the iliac veins where we can see dark brown thrombi within the veins and occluding the entire vessel one of the most important and potentially life-threatening complications in deep vein thrombosis is embolism in particular pulmonary embolism to the lung thank you